that is not dead which can eternal lie, and with strange eons even death may die. Here's your look at the Diamond Select. This is HP Lovecraft's Cthulhu Gallery Diorama Statue. The aperture was black with a darkness, almost material. That tenant browseness was indeed a positive quality, for it obscured such parts of the inner walls as ought to have been revealed, and actually burst forth like smoke from its eon-long imprisonment, visibly darkening the sun as it slunk away into the shrunken and gibbous sky on flappous membranous wings. The odor arising from the newly opened depths was intolerable, and at length, the quick-eared Hawkins thought he had heard a nasty slopping sound down there. Everyone listened, and everyone was listening still, when it lumbered slobberingly into sight and gropingly squeezed its gelatinous green intensity through the black doorway into the tainted outside air of that poison city of madness. This gallery diorama of Cthulhu is based on his description from The Call of Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft. It is cast in high-quality PVC and features detailed sculpting and paint applications. It was detailed and designed and sculpted by Ellie Livingston. Before taking upon the tasks of setting our sights on the H.P. Lovecraft statue presented by Diamond Select, the first responsibility that's been inherited upon these shoulders of mine is to provide you guys the necessary 411 of how tall these collectibles actually stand. So taking the tape measure not to the top, no, of the Cthulhu's head, but rather instead, the arms located on the back of his torso, as that being the highest point, I'm going to stop the tape measure right there. Regurgitating it to you, the members of the mob, you're looking at the statue standing exactly 8 inches in height. Switching that over to a unit of measurement acknowledged and recognized by others, you're also looking at the statue tw standing 20 and a half or 20.5 centimeters tall. Despite its size, despite the fact it's a gallery statue, and despite the fact it's comprised of PVC plastic, dismiss that immediately now. When you do pick up the statue for yourself, you're quite alarmed by how heavy it actually is. There's a lot of substantial plastic that's been crafted and forged inside the body here of the Cthulhu. We'll go ahead and pick it up right now. It is, like I said, considerably heavy. Though hollow underneath, there's not a whole lot of anything really going on underneath it, all of it. All the weight is probably all centered and focused on this piece right here, the actual Cthulhu himself. As you can see, he's emerging from his tomb, a nicely detailed bottom piece to the statue. Really, it does get a bit lost because of the size of the Cthulhu. It sort of overwhelms everything that's around it. But still yet, it's nicely detailed. It sort of has almost like a skin texture to it. I like that it has all these nooks and crannies where you've got the lighter color of the gray. Sort of just been brushed only onto the edge. Just a nice soft caress where you can still see the dark colors underneath that. It's as simple, as I always say, a simple way of painting a piece. And yet the end result, the effect, is really always quite successful. It gives you that sort of layered effect. And it's nicely in presented here as well. Located on the back, you can almost somewhat make out scripture. Or perhaps there are cracks and rocks. Again, it's some of the things that don't make quite the appearances on the sides, but really nice the way that they've detailed that as well. I know, granted, yes, a lot of it so much gets lost by his draping wings that are flopping over front of it. Spinning around also to the side as well, you can see one of its giant claws, its hands, onto the side. Actually, it's the case on both sides, although this one's more draped off to the side. This one's actually holding on to the side. Uh, you can't really too much see what's going on inside, nor is the intended really plan to have that. But, I mean, it's been sculpted inside, but it really casts a shadow literally when you've got the Cthulhu standing in front of it. So I don't really know how much of it has actually been detailed inside. i got to believe that Diamond Select would have spent just as much time crafting the inside as they would have done to the outside. They probably just wouldn't have painted the inside. Nice smoke effect they've also got from the side here. As he emerges out, it emerges out. You've got the smoke like I said, all surrounding the bottom of the base. It's been done in a slightly more off-colored yellow, not quite the traditional colors you would expect. It sort of adds a little bit more of the mystery, that it comes across more like a mist or almost a magical smoke than anything else. As you can see, it's not quite, it's not really quite a clear color, even like its starting color wasn't necessarily clear, sort of more of an off yellowish white. But then yet, they've actually painted the outer edge of it, just again, a slight caress. Shh, shh, shh. Just a slight caress of that white, 
So again, like only the edges of the smoke actually do stand out while you still got the main color of the plastic un underneath all, all that. Then, of course, we get to the main Cthulhu himself. I continue to say himself. I don't know if it's actually a gender-specific creature or if it necessarily is just an it. But nonetheless, though, it certainly is impressive. I've always been kind of very intrigued by the idea of a Cthulhu. Like the design of it, where it sort of had an octopus head, a more reptilian body, and then it also had the wings almost like a gargoyle. All the things come together rather intriguingly, I must admit. And then this detailing done incorporated to it, as you can see, it almost has... Again, like the head of an octopus, even like the back section of what you would expect to see on an octopus. But things you probably wouldn't expect on an octopus is it being green with multiple eyes. It's got a total of what seems to be six eyes. Although what's interesting is this one eye that's on the back there, as you can probably, eh, just right there, it's slightly squinted. Perhaps it's got a little bit of lemon juice in its eye. I don't really know, but as you can see, it's not quite the same as the others where all the other ones are more the piercing red. That one, again, is slightly a little bit, even like these ones here on the side, I do like that they're not the same continuation of sculpt, that they do change and differ them slightly from one another. This is also a nice way to add some incorporated dark green. As you can see, they've done it on both sides here as well. It does to do a good job of actually breaking it up, so it's not simply just the same color completely across the board. This also adds for the look of giving a little bit of shadow where like the light isn't going to be hitting it as much. That dark green is really nicely represented here. It doesn't seem to make too much of the appearances anywhere else. I mean, it, the majority of the color is almost more of a kind of a swamp green with again, all the detailing then brought forward by adding just the dry brushing. I always continue to say dry brushing, but sort of it pulls off the same effect. If you ever painted something, if you just dry brush paint over top of a surface, you're really only going to be getting the top layer actually hit. In a way, it kind of looks a bit like reptilian skin. In another way, it kind of looks a little bit like elephant skin, but it's still nicely presented here as well. As you can see, if we just spin the statue around, you are treated to these big giant wings, not really fully f seeing the full size of what they're capable of being. In this case, they're actually just kind of folded up with the arms slightly bent. You get just, of course, the slight nod as to what those wings color would be using this dark kind of rusted brown with a lighter color of almost like a yellowish beige that they've added to just the folds and flaps of those wings. Um, it doesn't really have much in the way of additional kind of semi-coat of clear coat over, over top of everything, so it doesn't have necessarily a slick look to its skin. Instead, it actually kind of relies more on just more of a semi-gloss or even just a matte colored paint, which I guess is really quite effective. In a way, I would have been interested to see what they could have done if they added like a semi-gloss just a clear coat over top of some of this. I feel like some of those details really certainly would have stood out quite a bit, especially around the areas of the head where you can see all those individual tentacles. He's got a total of 10. Uh, five on one side, five on the other, so it's not quite an octopus as octopus would have eight. And then, you, of course, you've got the coloring and detail done to each of the individual nails, the thumb, and, of course, all the four following fingers as well. And the same thing done also with the toes, big giant toes, smaller, smaller little recruits following next to the general. Uh, the foot, one other foot is obviously tucked completely inside. I can't even imagine it would be even sculpted. They probably finished it right off at this point right here. It didn't continue on the journey with the sculpt any bit after that fact. Uh, again, it's got some considerable weight to it. It almost in a way serves as a bit of a kind of a paperweight, really, because it is so substantially heavy. It's somewhat misleading because when you look at the bottom of it, there's, you know, again, like you can almost fit your fist, fist in it. You can almost have like a little Cthulhu puppet. That would be a very heavy puppet to be wielding on your hand. But overall, I just really like the design of it. Um, I certainly would love to see maybe variations. As I always really say when it comes to these statues that we look at from Diamond Select, the statues look so good. In a lot of cases, I would love to see what they could do with color variants. The idea of having the Cthulhu presented here in green with his tomb, his casket, if you will, done in gray. I would love to see what this could have been done and presented in an all black and white treatment, where like basically all the colors would be abstra uh, uh, extracted away from the main skin of the coloring of the body, and instead just swapped out for like a gray treatment or black and white treatment. I think that would also look really, really cool. It does also cause me to think in the back of my mind how big this wingspan would have actually looked. So maybe down the road, you never know. I would love to see maybe Diamond Select release this guy again with a full wing span. Of course, it doesn't quite fit the style of the way the figure is posed right now. He's emerging out. He's, I'm sure, going to take flight soon. Maybe down the road we'll get some other Cthulhu statues, as again, I've always been really intrigued by this particular character.
Yes, I've always been really intrigued by the design of H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu, sort of an amalgamation of multiple creatures put together, a giant lizard, for example, the wings like a dragon, the head like an octopus. I gotta imagine this thing would be pretty terrifying to see in real life. Let's hope that never actually happens. Although, the way that 2020 is going right now, you never know, the Cthulhu may emerge from its tomb. Let's hope that's not the case. But the closest thing we've gotten to that is, of course, some fan-created videos. There was one that stands out in my mind. I don't even know the artist responsible behind that, so I do apologize well in advance advance, but it's basically just a recorded video of several cars on the roadway, and then in the background you can see this giant towering shadowed figure, the Cthulhu, sort of sauntering his way in the background. That alone freaked me right out and makes me think, again, I would never want to see this thing in person. I'm sure the fate of the world will just be over. I mean, if we haven't had things bad enough as it is. I like the design here of the Cthulhu, sort of compact in his way that he's looking here in the Diamond Select Gallery release. His wings are closed in. Of course, he's just coming out of the tomb that's encased him. And uh, we really don't see him to his full size and stature. Of course, the possibility down the road of maybe getting more Cthulhu statues. I'm sure there's a good possibility that Diamond Select still wants to venture into Cthulhu land and maybe give us future releases. But I like this one that takes up very little space. Don't let the size fool you, of course. The statue is quite considerably heavy, heavy, considering it's only made of PVC plastic. But again, talking about things I've mentioned before, I'd love to see this guy done in a black and white treatment. I think this design of character works perfectly, goes hand in hand with the idea of doing it black and white. Never know, maybe down the road, just an idea thrown out there to the universe, and hopefully the folks at Diamond Slot capture that, and maybe we get ourselves a black and white variant of this guy down the road with maybe a black and white variant with still the red eyes. I think that would work really nice. But what do you guys think of the HP Lovecraft's Cthulhu? Certainly love to read your comments down below. A big thank you, by the way, to the folks over at Diamond Select who took the time and sent this one my way. If you're in the market of picking up Cthulhu, at least a smaller miniature ver version of Cthulhu, don't bring out the real one. That's going to be utter doom for the rest of the world. But you can pick this one up through various online sites. You can most definitely also check your local comic book stores when they do open up. And if you can't find a local comic book store, you can also go to www.comicshoplocator.com, put in your necessary postal code or zip code, and you should be able to find a comic book store in your area. Also, if you're new to this channel and liking the content you're seeing, consider the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below. Move on over, for example, to the bell notification. Hit that as well so that when all new videos are coming onto this channel, you'll be notified. Also, an FYI, I'm sure you already know this by now, but videos come to this channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. It's a good, easy way to guarantee that you know when videos are coming onto this channel, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do, and I'll see you guys next time.